All right, today I wanted to talk about command line pandas killers. So I have a collection of utilities that I turn to when I want to do some simple data manipulation. Now, none of these are going to be pandas replacements or dplyr replacements or data table replacements. None of them are going to completely replace those libraries. But it is interesting to see that in 2021, there are not just one, but many tools that can be used to do data manipulation on CSVs, and they do it really well. Uh, so I'm reviewing some utilities that I think are very good at manipulating CSV files. So uh, I do have a little post here on my website. I'm going to skip some of this. If you're interested in what I ended up finding uh, works well and what doesn't work well, you can take a look at some of these tables. Uh, one usually means present. Well, one always means present. Zero means it's not present in that library. And I also wanted to look specifically at some summary functions just to get a sense of what these different packages can and can't do and just get side-by-side -side comparisons. Now, I say that, but the idea here is that I don't want to discount a package just because maybe it has fewer features because features isn't really the only thing um, and speed isn't really the only thing. I didn't even look at speed here just because I didn't really want that to affect the results. Uh, sometimes with uh, different tools you might be attracted to it uh, because of more than just its feature set or its speed. Maybe there's a way it expresses operations that you might like. So I just wanted to, instead of do a ranking by features or ranking by speed, I wanted to do something a little different and give these different tools awards or maybe they're almost more like personalities like what would I how do I feel when I use the tool like wh what does it make me think of so the first one on the list and I guess I could go through this really quick that the tools I'm comparing and looking at is XSV CSV TK TSV utils MLR also called Miller and Q again all of these are great uh, picking and, and maybe you shouldn't just pick one. I think it would be useful to, to get to know a handful of these and explore them. All right, so the first one, XSV. I gave this the Stonehenge Award. Uh, the, the reason is that this tool just feels really rock solid. And the source code is clean, compiled, memory safe. And I think that this tool definitely will stand the test of time. Uh, it's not going anywhere. I, it could do the standard things that I would normally look for, especially when it comes to things like uh, summary statistics, filters, selects, joins. It can do all of that. Uh, really quick, I do have a file on my GitHub repository where I take a data set. It's a data slash weather dot CSV. I also have a shell script that just pulls this. Uh, but I take this file and I manipulate it with these different libraries so you can get a sense of how these different libraries have their own uh, options, flags, grammars for, for manipulating a CSV file. So for example, if you want to do some summary statistics on a CSV file, uh, which I'm calling DF, so dollar sign $DF is environment variable, all you do is XSV stats, uh, use this S option, and select temperature and humidity, and from this, I'm getting a handful of summary statistics. And this is really concise, which I, I like and, and part of me kind of doesn't like. The thing I don't like is that I feel it would be nice to use a very specific summary function, not just this everything option, but that's just what XSV gives you. So uh, that's XSV for summary functions. I have a few other things that I really liked with XSV, one thing I thought it did very well was joins. I thought it did joins probably, it felt, it felt better, joins felt better with XSV. So here I have a left join with XSV. All you do is uh, type this join option with this left flag and you say which column number you want to join on for two CSVs. It's really straightforward. So. I liked XSV because it was really solid, really great code, source code. And when it comes to things like filters, joins, selects, it does everything in a very clean, concise way. So that's XSV, great tool. All right, the next one, CSVTK. 
the word for this one is the orator. Uh, that's, that's like someone who likes to speak or elaborate or expound. Uh, the reason why I gave it this word is because I think that it gets a lot of things right in terms of the verbs it uses. So if, you've, if you're familiar with the dplyr library, you'll be used to verbs like summary, rename, mutate. And CSV TK has these same verbs. So for example, uh, doing a summary statistic, CSV T TK summary uh, dash F for the fields you want to select, and then you get to say each for each column and each function you want to do a summary on, you can specify that in CSV TK. But it's not just the summary function that's cool. Uh, there's also, let's see. Maybe I should just do a search here. All right, so mutate, mutate two. So this lets you make a new column. And I think the way it does it is really clean. You say uh, CSV TK, mutate two. This E is, is I believe, uh, calling an expression option. I'd have to look at the documentation. Remember, I did this, I did this a few days ago, and I can't really remember the exact name or purpose of the dash E flag. But uh, what I'm doing here is I'm setting uh, I'm using this dollar sign temp and saying, hey, if dollar sign temp, which is a column, you call columns with a dollar sign in CSV TK. If it's greater than 32 degrees, call it liquid, else solid. And we're going to name this new column water phase. So I thought that was done really well. There's other examples of things like that in CSV TK. So it also does joins well. The thing that you have to watch out for on CSV TK is how it handles NAs. And so this is the one thing I wasn't uh, too much of a fan of with CSV TK, but uh, CSV TK does not remove NAs by default. It does have a flag that allows you to do this, but uh, it's not default. So in XSV, ignoring NAs in every case that I tested was a default operation. With CSV TK, it's not, so you have to just use a flag to say, hey, if there's an A's, uh, remove them. But um, yeah, I just really liked the, the way that CSV TK expressed its operations. So that's CSV TK. TSV utils. So the award here is the Ranger. And I, I call it the Ranger for two reasons. One is that the utilities it's not just one package. So CSV TK is part of CSV TK. You call CSV TK and you say something like, um, I want to do a summary or I want to do a mutate. With CSV utils, you call something like CSV select. That's its own binary. Or TSV filter. That's its own binary. And I actually really like this. I thought it made it, uh, I, thought, I thought it was a good way to look through things like the documentation, the man pages, I had a good sense of what what I needed to do without filtering through too many lines of, of text in, in, in a man page or, or readme. So uh, let me see if I can find some examples where TSVTK seemed to shine. All right, so here's one, TSV summarize. So this is going to be a summary function. Header is just saying we're using a file that has a header. Group by is saying what we want to group by, so this is pretty pretty clean. And we're grouping by origin, and what we want to do is a count. And that's it. So so that would be a count grouped by origin for this for this weather data set. Let's see. There's some others down here. TSV select. I mean, this is this is very clear. Uh, and I don't think, I mean, this is probably, the, if I were to implement a, a similar package, this is how I, how, how I would imagine implementing it. It's just so clean. TSV select with a header file using these fields, origin, year, month, temperature, from the TSV data frame. And then we can pipe it to another utility they have, which is TSV pretty. TSV pretty uh, just makes the CSV file look nice. 
And I guess I should mention here, I'm looking at some of these other lines. Lots of times I'm piping the output of the CSV to a application called TV, which is short for Tidy Viewer. And this is also a CSV Pretty printer. Since TSV has its own, I use TSV Pretty for, T for when I was working with TSV functions. But when it came to the other command line utilities, I was always piping to TV. Uh, really nice, really nice package for, for CSV Pretty Printing. So that's TSV Select uh, the, and the TSV Utilities package. I thought that it was really unique that it was able to group different binaries in their own in their own package. So I like that a lot. It was the way I thought of it is like a ranger's uh, quiver of arrows. You know, that's that's kind of the idea. These are the different binaries that that TSV utils use uses. The thing I didn't like is that you cannot use CSVs on TSV utils. They have to be TSVs, and they have some good reasons for doing it. Um, but this is specifically looking at CSV data manipulators. So when I wanted to use TSV utils, I used a function that they also provide, another arrow in their quiver, CSV to TSV. So you have to convert your CSVs to TSV, and then you can use TSV utils on, on that file. So that's TSV utils. Uh, the Ranger, because it's got different packages for its different functionality, and I think it veers off the, the standard path by having all of its operations work only on, on TSV files, uh, which has its, its pros and cons. All right, Miller. Miller, I call the scientist. Miller is a huge tool. Uh, probably, I, I didn't even look at source code, but if I had to guess, Miller would be probably an order of magnitude more, more code than the others. And it's because it does a lot of stuff. And it does a lot of stuff very well. So let me let me pull up Miller. And I guess first what I should say, I don't have an example of using some of the functions that gives it the scientist title. But uh, the examples that I have here is that you can do linear regression with MLR. You can also bootstrap with MLR. And that's just the beginning. MLR is kind of its own... Uh, in its own league. Uh, and for many applications, you may not need all that power, right? And maybe, you know, something like CSV TK or XSV uh, or TSV utils is, is perfect for what you need. Miller is when you want to do something a little bit more heavy at the command line. And I think it does, it, it fills its role well. It fills that niche well. So let's see, where could I find a good Miller example? Okay. So here's one, Miller. With Miller, you have to add these flags. I guess, yeah, flags. You're saying the input is a CSV, the output's gonna be a CSV, and you're going to filter. And most things in Miller are expressions, so you'll have things quoted. And the way you select columns is with this dollar sign, a lot like, a lot like with uh, what we saw with CSV TK. So you do, uh, I want to filter where origin is equal to LGA, month is equal to six, day is equal to one. And then I just pipe that to TV. Uh, that's one example. Let's see what else we have. Uh, this is this is a sort. Sorts are a little bit different on the command line utilities. Well, they're different from what you might think uh, if you're used to using libraries. When you're using command line utilities, there's these flags uh, like uh, dash NR, dash N, and these different flags will say yeah, you want to do things in reverse order, or you, you want to do something reverse order with numerical values, or you want to do something reverse order with lexical values. So there's this, this NR flag is something that's common within the CLI data manipulation tools, but maybe something you aren't used to seeing with dplyr or pandas. So a little bit different there. Let's see. What else do we have? Mm. I really liked how powerful Miller was with making new columns. Making new columns isn't something that every command line utility has. Uh, 
So, and Miller does it very well. You name the new column, and then you can also input different columns as, as inputs or arguments to a function. So here, I just have a feature is equal to temperature over humidity. And in my mind, that was really clear, very concise. I think it does a great job at making new columns. So uh, I did again, I didn't show the full power of Miller. And it's just because I'm trying to compare similar features across all these command line utilities. And if I were to go into some of the features that make Miller the scientist, uh, it would be the only tool that would have things like bootstrapping, linear regression, co covariance calculations, things like that. So if you are interested in doing more uh, statistics type of analysis at the command line, uh, definitely look more into Miller. But even, even without that, even without the statistics portion, it does lots of other things really well. Filters, new columns, things like that. Miller's great. Uh, Q. Q is very popular, and I've, I've seen Q mentioned a number of times on my YouTube channel. People seem to really like Q, and so I gave it the title Defense of the Agents, Dota, right? It's, a, it's something that's using a grammar that already exists, and I think that's really cool. I don't think it's anything to, to scoff at, you know. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's unique in that way. No other tools are really using SQL-like expressions to do data manipulation. So let, let me show what I mean by that. So let's see. If you know SQL, Q is going to be a breeze to use, okay? So here I'm, I'm doing a, a replace for, for NAs. So this is just said, looking for NAs and replacing it with nothing. All right, that's an that's a easy way to, to take care of NAs. It's not something that you, that's unique to Q. Um, many different command line utilities need this uh, search and replace for NAs. But anyways, once, once I do a search and replace for NAs, I can pipe that to Q. With Q, I'm just saying, hey, I'm using a header file. Uh, the delimiter is a col uh, comma, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select uh, these different columns, do a sum, or sum, min, max, average, count, and group by origin. So this is, you can see this is just, just like SQL. This is how you'd express it in SQL. And the cool thing with Q is that lots of times I didn't even look up the documentation, right? I just tried typing what I would do if I was writing SQL. And most of the time it worked. And so that's really cool about Q. That, that, that's a cool feature with Q. Um, filters are just like they are in SQL. So use that where clause. Uh, there's another one. Let's see. Uh, sorting, just like, just like SQL. So joins, Q does well also. So inner joins, left joins. It seemed to do. It seemed to do great. Uh, surprisingly, I, I, it, there wasn't like a union clause. So in SQL, when you want to do something like uh, append more rows onto a data frame, or append columns onto a data frame. So maybe if you're, uh, or you can think of this as bind columns or bind rows. Q didn't have a way of handling that, and frankly, most of the tools didn't have a way of handling that. When it came to these. Uh, Table to table operations. It seemed like XSV was the one that was that was able to do some of these appending by rows or appending by columns. So uh, that wasn't available in Q. So Q doesn't have everything SQL has, but for lots of things you would normally do, Q has a lot. So I call it Defense of the Ancients because SQL is one of the first ways we had of expressing operations on data sets, and Q sticks to that. And I think that's great. So that is all I've got for these different command line utilities. Again, every single one of them are great. They're open source. The developers, you can tell, spend a lot of time on each of them. So I would say if you're interested in doing command line data manipulation, pick a handful. You know, maybe, maybe don't just try one, but try maybe three. Or, or you can try all of them. Just pick a handful and give it a shot. See how it goes. And if you've got any feedback or you feel like there's something I might have missed in these tables, uh, provide that feedback in the comments. And that's it. Thanks for watching.